What's going on all my internet friends out there? We're at the junkyard today. We're in the trusty rusty Dodge Durango. We have been holding on to this car guys. I, I have personally, I love this damn Durango. We've been using it to tow cars with and move shit in and out. We've got a truck today and what a truck means, that big semi truck is backed up over there. We have to uh, count cars and process them. Processing means uh, fluid removal, catalytic converter removal, and then they go out there to the big pile and they get smashed down into a little ball and then we load them up into a truck, uh, the semi trucks. Uh, so we've been doing that all day. So I haven't had a bunch of, of time but right now, we are on the hunt, and this is one of the great things about being down here. We have, um, uh, Dad works on people's cars. Uh, in case you don't know, we work on a lot of cars for a lot of people. Right now, we've got an F-150. We just put a heater core and a blend door in. The little blend door in the dash that opens and closes to control the heat and air. And even after putting the, uh, Even after putting the uh, heater core and the blend door in it, the, the truck's not warming up like it's supposed to. And we are thinking the radiator is stopped up or maybe the water pump isn't circulating like it should. Um, so what we're doing is we're looking at these trucks. We're gonna try to find one with a good radiator in it. I'm thinking this was the 5.4 engine that this one has. The truck that we're working on is a 4.6 but it should be about the same. What we're measuring today is the uh, checking the coolant lines where they go in for the transmission cooler, the lower radiator hose, and then which side the upper goes in. Now, the hose has been cut on this one, so you get to look down in there, and you get to see that there is some uh, rust forming in the radiator. It'll look like mud is what it's gonna look like, but it's, it's, it's rust. And uh, so what we're doing is we're checking out these uh, F-150s. There's a couple more down there. And we're gonna try to find the radiator. We're also gonna match it up and see if the radiator out of maybe like a uh, expedition or an explorer will work. But I've got the trusty Durango at four low. And we are just plowing through this mud. This Durango, man, I'm telling you, it's, it is damn near unstoppable. I, I love this Durango. I. When I was a kid, my grandparents had one just like this, 99. Theirs had the 360 V8, and uh, it was four-wheel drive, and that thing was a monster, I'm telling you. And I didn't realize how bad I missed it till I drove that one. That thing is still holding on good. Uh, and this is a six-cylinder truck. Right there on top, you can see the coil pack for the six. But we're gonna look anyway. There's your trans cooler lines, lower radiator hose, and upper hose. And this is the six cylinder. But notice how much thinner this radiator is by comparison to the 5.4. So now we'll go over here, open the hood on this one. This one was a V8. Uh, I don't know if this is 4.6 or 5.4 either. But it's got a good radiator, And but this one was a V8. So notice how thin the radiator is on this one. I'm gonna guess 4.6. Cooler lines right here on the top, lower hose, upper hose. So looks like we can get one out of any of these. It's not gonna be too particular. But now we know that this one looks like it has a decent radiator in it, even though it's a six cylinder. The V8 has the same depth radiator. It's not any deeper for the 4.6, but the 5.4 over there has the big radiator in it. And I would check out the red one right here, but it's burned to a crisp. I don't think it's gonna be worth anything. Look at this. Look at that. Hey guys, look at that shit. Crap on the camera lens. We got to say it in a video. How about that? Don't think I didn't think, don't think I didn't get to, that y'all missed out on that opportunity. Melted the grill and the lights. In case you ever wonder what a burn F-150 looks like. Here you go. And uh, from what I hear, 
a lot of these trucks burn down because of the intake manifold uh, the intake manifold starts leaking um, and it'll burn them up I've actually seen a lot of the uh, grand marquees and town cars and stuff do the same the intake manifold starts leaking they keep driving and it keeps leaking and eventually it, it starts dumping gas and when it does that yeah over it is done there's no saving it it goes up in smoke it's over with game over uh, that looks to be about all of our uh, round body F-150s so now we'll take a little trip over here to the Explorers see what they look like Yeah, guys oh keep in mind 277,000 miles on this Durango and this morning oh it's stalled okay here's another thing it's probably not running the best because when we got it it hadn't been running in like four years and then I'm not about to buy gas for this thing because it's a junkyard car and we process cars all day. For example, today is a processing day, like I mentioned, because we are having uh, the trucks come in to load up scrap metal to haul away. So what's going on is I take, when we process the cars and we drain all the gas out, I put the gas in this. And I'll be honest, quite a lot of times we put the gas in more than just the junkyard stuff. You know, if, if the gas, is, if it comes out clean enough, now don't freak out because we do strain it. It's not like we're just dumping straight nasty gas into this thing. We will strain the gas. But a lot of times, we'll use it in our personal vehicles if it's good gas. And we gotta try to get that door unlocked. There we go. See, this is the good season too right now. You don't have to worry about bees or anything. Snakes, that's another story, but as far as bees go, we're not, we're not having to worry about that just yet. Look at this radiator. Hose, upper hose over here, which means trans cooler line there, one below, and the hose. And that radiator doesn't look too terribly bad either. Intake. This one looks a little bit better than the other one we saw at first. So there's a possible candidate. This one over here, this was an Eddie Bauer, so this is probably the 5.4. But see how much wider this radiator is? I do not think it's going to be that one. It's going to be the skimpy one. And I'm about to shove my hand in there. 237,000 miles. We got the navigators and all that stuff. So let's see if this one. Oh, this is also an Eddie Bauer. So probably the 5.4 and the, the wide uh, thing. This expedition was the one that me we almost bought for Tim. If you guys remember the uh, rescuing the 99 Corolla video. This was the one we almost bought for Tim. This is the 4.6. And I know for a fact this one ran and drove. So this one, this one right here, I know that this radiator is definitely good. So we've got a few of them to choose from. We'll just pick the best looking one. Man, I love it. You need a part, it's right here. And half the time, a lot of stuff that comes in here, as stupid as it sounds, has new parts on it. People will, you know, they'll have an overheating issue. It'll be a head gasket. But they'll put a radiator, a water pump, thermostat, new hoses, all that shit in it before they finally, you know, agree that the head is gone. And then they junk it. Well, now we have a, but then, you know, when they junk it, we'll have a, let's say, for example, a 2000 model Honda Civic with a brand new radiator, a brand new water pump new hoses thermostat and those parts people will buy those parts all day long and so then we've got a brand new one right here you know half the price of a new one and you can leave with it right now take it off yourself save yourself a couple bucks um 
another thing is alternators starters things of that nature there i couldn't tell you how many starters we save off of cars because they're brand new literally you'll we'll pick the car up in the air to process it it'll be a brand new starter or a remanufactured starter and a lot of these cars that come in are common vehicles honda accords honda civics we've got a crv over here right now uh, that Dodge Ram, it runs, but it skips really bad, so it's about to get processed out. The Town & Country, it's a new one. Um, it's really nice, but the engine's skipping. Uh, not as bad as the Dodge, but it's skipping. The Lancer over there runs and drives. It's just beat the shit. The Caliper needs, I think the Caliper needs a starter. Um, the Camaro's already been sold. And then the Pacifica, it just came in. I haven't even got a chance to figure out with that one. You remember we had the other Pacifica. It needed a transmission. We sold it. A guy put a trans in it. And he's driving it now. But this one, I don't know what it needs. I haven't got to look at it yet. Uh, but yeah, a lot of stuff comes in here with damn near brand new parts on it. And we can save those parts. Now, we don't get a lot of Toyotas and stuff. And that makes me kind of... I, I don't know. It's bittersweet. But because... The fact that we don't get a lot of Toyotas means that, well, you know, they're pretty decent cars. They hold their own even in their older years. But at the same time, it doesn't leave any parts for me, you know? And this truck right here, we actually used to work on before they scrapped it. And now that I say that, if I'm not mistaken, we put a radiator in this truck about a year ago. It's a good looking radiator, but this one has a uh, bad head gasket, but it runs, it's just, it'll overheat, so we'll add that one to the list, what we know we have, but anyway guys, just, just taking me a little break. Cruising down through here, seeing what I can find. We've got a Ford Flex, not a Flex, a, what is that, the uh, SEL, what do they call that, the Freestyle? Yeah, needs a transmission. I don't know what the Cougar needs. I don't know, a four-eyed Fox body, car just stalled. G-body, Caprice. The Chevrolet van, the engine's getting sold out of it. Somebody wants it, and then the transmission. We were gonna put in David's wagon, but the kick down cable is different. It's not the right setup, but we've got a, uh, a trans down here for it, so we're just gonna pull it. But it is death row day at the junkyard. Everything's getting put down jeep we might take that jeep home it's a turd but we still might do it anyway i've got a video up on my channel of that well if it's not up now it will be before long so but over here where all the magic is happening cars into dust so i'll go get a few minutes of this but thanks for watching guys we will catch you in the next video later on down the road drop a comment down below let us know what you think and we'll do some more junkyard stuff if y'all want to keep seeing them see you later guys